So there's no point in killing off one because you're gonna. Oh, there's a third! <laughs> Bastard! Got him. There we go. Beautiful. So we get all that. Okay, now that Taking we... those out is completely worth it with how much you get. Mm hmm. But I can see it um, being a little fastidious from time to time, especially if you don't get it right away. Well, and it's, it, especially if you're going to grind, you don't want the big hulking weapon unless you're doing crowd control. So that's where Raison comes into play, because it's a faster sword. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, where, where are you? I will take your souls, please. So, Alex, what's your take on the game so far? Looks pretty cool so far. Do you like a more hack and slash version of Resident Evil? With yeah. Less tank controls. I mean, I could bring it back if you want. I mean, we, we could do that. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. All right. You spin me right round, baby, right round. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I actually am better with the D-pad than I am the analog. Analog is throwing me off. Ooh. I haven't used a D-pad to move a character in a game in so long. <laughs> See, I tend to, I tend to um, be happier doing that. D-pad? What is this, 20 years ago? Man, the party that happened here must have been epic. I mean... Keep it to yourself. Yeah, I or got... keep it to yourself. Um, what happens in feudal Japan stays in feudal Japan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, dude, uh, could you let go of the, the guy's head? Um, I think he's dead. C could you do that? He wants to eat it, so go kill him. Okay, cool. Ha -ha! Wow, beautiful. So it's not like you get whole new attacks when you upgrade the magic. It's just you get it more powerful. Yeah, they're stronger rather than mm -hmm. um, something new to add on. Which, again, is something that I kind of miss from old games. So as everybody knows, I started my second triad Let's Play and just playing through the first Gears of War um, and just like I keep tripping myself out because I'm like are there no like special I'm sorry I'm, I'm gonna stop you right here and now Brenton because I need Alex's opinion oh what? yeah he has a problem with blood and he's playing Gears of freaking War yeah don't ask me <laughs> don't ask me about my current life choices I've already been actually you don't hear it in my voice but as I've been editing videos I'm like oh wow god oh <laughs> like, why am I doing this to myself? And the game encourages you to do that. I know. But I keep tripping myself out because I'm expecting to do, like, skill trees. Oh, and I about that. The magic fountain is also helpful, And, too. like, get collectibles. And I'm like, ugh. It's not as intense as I expect a game nowadays to come out to be like. Oh, hi. So it's just, I don't know. It's nice not having to worry about so many different little upgrades and stuff like that. A strange man is silently staring at you. That is so creepy. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So this guy will come into play later as he's basically the side quest content to be able to kind of overpower yourself in the end. And we will be doing that. Uh, he basically has kind of a um, Alex and Brenton will know this through Zelda. He's basically the gauntlet dungeon. And at the, uh, at the bottom of the dungeon is a really rare item that you need near the end of the game. Okay. Right. So we're going to go and get it. Yeah, yeah. That, that you don't sense. have to, though. I, I'm going to point this out. If you want to do this regular, you can. But we're going to do it because it actually has a really awesome benefit. I mean, I feel like, I mean, you're showing. Yes. Yay. You're showing this off for our benefit. Yeah. So, I mean, that is definitely something that I would like to see since you're super, super excited about it. Oh, I love this series. And and it, I was so happy to see that this series got revived on PS4 that um, one of the reasons that I'm kind of holding off on doing other games with you guys, because I would really like to do it, is I'm wondering if Capcom, through watching this game sales, which were really good, by the way, it actually did really, really well sales wise. Uh, I think even better than its PS2 release. So at that point, I'm wondering if they're going to do a 1080p collection to be able to bring the other three games to PS4 era, or if they're just going to reboot the series. I have no problem with either because I have all the PS2 games, so if it's not a collection, we could still go through the other ones if you want to. Yeah. But I'll let you guys make that call when we when we finish the game. Because obviously, you know, collaboration is amazing and all, but maybe you want to do it with another game and make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, well, I mean, I'm like what I'm seeing so far. And 
Oh, speaking of level two Ryzen. Oh, and that's how you, okay. That makes sense. I was gonna ask how you know when you need to upgrade to level, like how you know that you need to have a higher level. Yep, number, uh, of, number of tumors on the door. Okay, okay, that's I'm gonna very... call them tumors just because I have no other way to, to name them. I mean, that's exactly what they are, I feel, so. There we go. And obviously it does more melee damage, so now I'm killing these guys faster. Beautiful. Whoa. The one thing that can kill you in this game is the camera. Because if, if there's an enemy that you just can't see, how much you can do about it? I, oh, I hated cameras in early games like these. Ooh. I love being able to like have free flow, like a free form camera that I can control at my will. Hmm. That's interesting. Lightning jolts from the crystal. Okay. Well, what happens if I use Enryu on it? Fire burns within the crystal. Mm, what about the last one? That's technically the third weapon. So we don't have it yet. All right. So we have the blue book. So now we can rate the cars. No, nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> what, what an incredible creature this Nobunaga is. Normal animals would have already been dead from such a large transfusion of demon blood. By the way, this is the journal of Guildenstern. Oh. Uh, it doesn't really point that out. I do not understand how the holy blood of the demons could be compatible with the body of a pathetic animal. How disturbing. Moreover, this Nobunaga seems to be highly intelligent and ambitious. He wasn't the slightest bit astonished when we resurrected his body. He fearlessly pledged his loyalty to Master Fortinbra. Yeah, not Fortin Bras, people. It's Fortin Bra. So we're going to be making a lot of bra jokes. <laughs> and, he just made a va <laughs> and he just made a vow to sacrifice his own species. He is an animal that could should not be underestimated. If Nobunaga continues to offer sacrifices, we will soon run out of test subjects for our experiments. Hmm, creepy. But again, he's a scientist, so that's the way they built him. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we can't really go any further this way, but it's a good thing that we have this door unlocked. Ooh. Essentially, we need to get that last, like the last weapon, and then we can continue down that way, which I'm guessing is what we're... Uh, yeah, we, we're, we're going to make our way to getting the third weapon, but it's a ways off, so... Okay. Let's use this door Stop! instead. Oh. Let me go! Quiet! What is going on here? Uh. Uh, stop! Huh? Who are you? And what do you want with that boy? I should ask you the same thing. You are not working for Saito clan, are you? Wait. Can you be Samanosuke Akechi? Maybe. Yes, you are. I cannot believe you are here of all places. I am a servant of the Oda clan. My name is Tokichiro Ginoshita. This man will eventually conquer the world under the name Hideyoshi Toyotomi. Thank you, what Sesame Street voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> First, we must talk business. Tell me, Samonusuke, are you interested in serving our clan? My lord Nobunaga Oda would welcome a great samurai like yourself. I serve no one. My life is mine and mine alone to command. <laughs> mm. I see. However, I will not give up yet. We shall meet again. <laughs> what a little creep. So believe it or not, this guy is a regular in the Onimusha series. He shows up quite a lot. Uh, and in fact, he is the villain of the fourth game because at that point, it's based around the time that Hideyoshi Toyotomi existed. And so he is under that name and he is the emperor of Japan at that point. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I just love the fact that they throw in this random historical voiceover to explain who he is. He's like, okay. I mean, it was convenient, don't get me wrong. <laughs> History! Because why not? Well, I like little... I like little blips of historical facts like that, but put me into, like... like a class oh, me too, but it's just random. <laughs> I, uh, that's what I love about it. <laughs> oh, journal number three. Uh, so let's see. I am starving. I wonder how many days have passed since I entered this cave. My only source of sustenance has been the water leaking out of the walls. I followed the smell of blood to this place. Normally, I would not have been able to smell it, but hunger seems to have sharpened my senses. That is why I am now watching something I could not have imagined, even in my worst nightmares. 
a ghastly sight, demons eating human prisoners alive. They pay no attention to their victim's screams. They just crunch their bones and chew up their flesh. Ugh. I am standing still, just watching the scene so as not to be spotted by the demons. No, that is not exactly what I have in mind. I am gazing upon a person's finger lying on the ground. When a person dies, its body becomes only meat. I begin to fear my desires. I am like a wild scavenger, waiting expectantly for the scraps of food that the tiger leaves behind. What evil thoughts I am having, Sainyo. So you, you basically, these journals are like his devolving into madness. Yeah, no shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad that we got that. It's actually one of those cool little stories. It, like this is this is the equivalent, Alex, of like the itchy, tasty file right. that we got, which is so creepy in Resident Evil. To to basically explain it to you, Brenton, there's a journal entry in the original Resident Evil where you come across a researcher's diary, and he's basically cataloging how he's been feeling over the course of many days mm -hmm. and how he gets the the then T virus. And eventually his dialogue just starts devolving into more Neanderthalic kind of tone. Yeah. And it ends with him saying, so itchy, so tasty. <laughs> After he literally ate like one of the guards. So yeah, nasty one. And even better, when you read that file, immediately the closet behind you opens. It's the, it's the dude. And he, he tries to kill you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's actually a really good scary moment in the original. Really good setting the scene there even with a craptastic dub. Mm. I mean, we, we knock the dub, but we, we love the dub. It's so bad. You, it's so bad that it's good. Yes, yeah. it really is. That was kind of like a show that my husband and I binged this weekend. It started off like really bad with questionable like cinema, cinematography choices and like really strange like acting. Mm -hmm. But as the show progressed, it got so good. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those things where it's it's so bad, it's good. It, it just eventually grows on you. Oh, what's this? What is this? It has a strange indent. You need something to open this. Hmm, that's creepy looking. Oh. Samanosuke, is there something you want to Oh ask my gosh. Do not be afraid. No! You want to hurt me like that other samurai did. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your name. I... I am Yumamaru. Yumamaru, you must tell me. What did that samurai want with you? Um, why should I know? Fine, then why are you here? Who brought you here? Uh, uh. Oh my gosh. Go after him while I look for Princess Yuki. I will. So who is she? Like... I can't believe it. In updating models, they added jiggle physics to Kaede. Is she supposed to be like the just like little tag along friend? Um, she is a companion of Samanosuke, but completely professional. Uh, she is his assistant that is a ninja. Oh, so cool. But they added jiggle physics to her in updating the model. Why not? <laughs> All right, polygonal jiggly boobs ahead. All right. <laughs> this is coming for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, fun fact, we are actually going to be playing as Kaede later in this game. Oh, cool. So we'll, we'll have some moments with her. How do they, like, run past all these guys? I, you know what? I, I stopped asking questions after about Resident Evil 2. <laughs> How did you, how did you not pass Mr. X on the way up? Uh, <laughs> better not to ask that question. <laughs> just, Mr. X was there, he just didn't see him. Exactly, he just came in out of nowhere going, oh yeah! <laughs> I've actually been watching the, re well, let's play the remake of Resident Evil 2. Oh, dang it. I was kind of hoping to keep it fresh to you, but I, you know what, I'm, I should give up on that because you're just going to watch Let's Plays. Yeah, pretty much. But there, there's one thing that you need to see when we actually do the Let's Play of it, and don't look up the mods, because I really want to show this to you, okay? <laughs> the mods are amazing. Yeah, yeah, Britain's seen it. It's amazing. In fact, do you want me to just spoil it to you right now? Because yeah, you're, you're probably not going to know. The sun. Uh, there's a mod that can, because of course this mod is always usually the first that happens in a game. 
uh, you know, they were busy doing the naked mods for, for all the characters. Yeah. And they decided to do one for Mr. X. Oh, wow. Except they put him in a, like, a thong-like Speedo. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so you can literally have Mr. X chasing you in a goddamn Speedo. It was pretty <laughs> glorious. It was hilarious. And and Brinton was telling me there's another one that turns him into Thomas the Tank Engine. Jimmy freaking Christmas. Just, I like I was watching that and I like I've never seen Resident Evil 2, but it still like freaked me so bad because I was just like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. and, and what's funny is, is like, that's a YouTube meme. I've seen numerous Team Fortress 2 videos that do that. Is just uh, turn people into Thomas the Tank Engine and just have him be all angry and stuff. That thing is like has become such a horrifying like feature of pop culture now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, hi everybody. Oh crap! You bastards! Got to race back down there. No, screw you! I Are want to just stab you. Are they still gonna be there? I hope so. I think you can get there in time to be able to get something off of them. Oh, Man, these on. camera angles. Uh -huh. Aha! I'm really bad at the death, deadly strikes. I really am. <laughs> so this game was the one of Mamoru Samaru, sorry, uh, Samuro Gochi's soundtracks. The guy who admitted that he had a Ghost Rider the whole time. Sweet. What other games has he done? Uh, the name sounds familiar, so... Oh, uh, Resident Evil, the, direct, the director's cut. Oh, Shocker really? Yeah. He's the guy that did that 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 song for the, the kitchen area? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, they're not here. Damn it. Oh my gosh, yeah. he made that? Uh, well, I don't know if he made that or he had his orchestrator ghost right it for him because oh that's so bad i like we ought to pull out that track for brinton <laughs> just to have him listen to it it's so bad and what's funny is is that they put that music to like clips from paranormal activity to child's play Ugh. where like all of a sudden you'll have that moment where somebody gets you know uh pulled off camera yeah and all of a sudden instead of the music that's there it's like <laughs> so weird. Oh my gosh. It it it's one of those weird things that is just so lovable about that game. That's why I love the director's cut version. Crystal's fit in the center. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I have to have energy on. Yay, now I can go through here. Now I'll swap back over. Hi! Was that worth it for you? I hope that was worth it for you. I have the power! Oh, crap. <laughs> I wanted to hit the big samurai, too. Well, f damn it! There we go. That's my only complaint with Enryu. You have to aim it. All right, there we go. I think that's all the ones in here. Mm, nobody else is coming after you. Yep. Ooh. Uh, box? Aha! Normal arrows. Very good. We're getting some arrows. So we eventually will get a bow. And this is normal arrows. Yay! And now we have the Biako, which, um... So this is more translations. I believe now if we go into the files... How many are there? Because right now those are two of the four lords in Japanese folklore. Uh, there are f there are the four lords, but there I think there's an additional three or four files. Okay. So, because there's a second transcript, but the four four lords is another one to to give you the history and all. Okay. That. So you so for like Serio we have subverted their power a man against, and then Biako we have restored the chasm of between their plan. And I believe when you get into the chest screen, there's a button that you can press to basically merge them. So you can see all the translations. Okay. All right. So we're going to do Cohen. Not the Cohen brothers, people. <laughs> but the cool part is, is so 
you saw how we could convert herbs to medicine, right, Alex? Yes. We could also convert arrows into fire arrows. Lovely. We want to be careful about that, though, because, again, items are finite because it's survival horror. Yeah. 